Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this uh, lecture this evening. Uh, my name is Kevin Featherstone. I'm the director of a research unit at the LSE, uh, the Hellenic Observatory. And tonight's lecture is part of a series that the Hellenic Observatory uh, organizes. It's my uh, great pleasure to uh, welcome our speaker this evening, uh, Kostas Mekalides. Uh, Kostas Mekalides is chairman of the board of directors for the uh, National Bank of uh, Greece, a post he has held, I think, since January uh, of this year. Uh, but uh, Kostas Mekalides has had uh, vast experience in finance and banking in different uh, countries. Uh, perhaps he wouldn't like me to say, but uh, probably for over 30 years in different uh, locations. He's ha held senior positions at Salomon Brothers uh, UK, Merrill Lynch UK, Credit Suisse, and UBS. Uh, he holds a PhD in uh, economics from the University of Denver, an MBA in finance uh, from Columbia Business School. With this vast experience of different organizations, different countries, uh, etc., of course, uh, he's very well placed, positioned to lead the National Bank of Greece uh, forward in a new changing uh, banking uh, climate. But of course, his views about change and transformation are not relevant only for the bank, Ethniki Trapezatis Aladas, but also for Greece and perhaps more broadly uh, beyond that uh, as well. Of course, the financial sector is going through unprecedented change uh, internationally. Uh, there are instruments, developments in the banking sector, which non-economists and non-finance people can only marvel at and remain rather uh, confused uh, by. Uh, the banking sector in Greece, of course, has undergone quite a lot of uh, restructuring in the context of the crisis. We read about successive iterations of stress tests, uh, assessing the durability of uh, different banks in the, in the Greek system. Uh, so change is underway. How Greece responds to change will be crucial. Does Greece have a model for change? Is Greece looking forward uh, to the future with an, a, a sense of the destination where it wishes uh, to be? And in order to get that change, what kind of leadership is needed to deliver the necessary uh, innovation? Perhaps during the crisis period, many would have seen Greece as being essentially reactive rather than initiating, a sense of victimhood rather than the sense of ownership. Coming out of the crisis, surely this is the time above all when Greece collectively institutions within the economy uh, must think about destination and change responding to the challenges uh, we have. So this evening's lecture is very timely uh, for us and I'm uh, very much looking forward to uh, hearing uh, Kostas Mikhailides give us uh, his views. Uh, he'll speak for perhaps 30, 40 minutes. Uh, there should then be plenty of time for questions and answers uh, afterwards. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. You can see a hashtag LSE Greece. You can send us your, your comments. And uh, we are also recording this lecture. It will be available as a video and audio recording, so you can download it as a podcast uh, in due course. Uh, but so, uh, without further ado, can I please ask you to join me in welcoming Kostas Mikhailides. Thank you, Kevin, and uh, thank you all for joining me tonight. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, some time ago, I knew a Harvard law professor who had a uh, second home in uh, Maine and by the beach. And uh, he and his family, wife and children, used to go there every summer and enjoy the good weather. And there was a mother-in-law who used to join them as well, lovely woman. 
She used to drive the children to the beach, to church on Sundays, and to the grocery store if needed. Um, and there was a small problem. Although she was a lovely woman, she only knew how to drive an automatic car. And the car up in Maine was a manual. So at the end of the long summers, they used to take the car to the garage and pay the sum of $5,000 at the time to change the gearbox. And that happened year after year because they were concerned about telling her about change. So at some point, somebody had a brilliant idea that what they should do is um, sit down with the woman, and they did, and say, we love you very much. We would like to stop changing the car and do a small transformation. So they introduced her to a driver's uh, education specialist who taught the woman how to drive a manual, and they saved 5,000 euros, and everybody was very happy. So I thought I would liven the audience up with this um, as we're going to talk about some more serious aspects of transformation as not to be confused with change. So um, Greece's uh, odyssey continues. The journey remains long. It's filled with adventures and things to learn. Considerable progress was achieved. However, the distance of travel to the destination persists as uh, Kevin told us already. Some, um, some of the adventures experienced were life-changing. The years of borrow and spend created an artificial reality of wealth. Then the, came of reckon the day of reckoning uh, came, which challenged the government and the banking system in a doomed loop. The banking system weakened because of large exposures to a feeble sovereign and to a worsening economy and the sovereign needed to borrow from stakeholders to recapitalize the banks. The recession that followed was deep and long. The damage to the economy was significant. Wages were slashed and taxes raised to address competitiveness through internal devaluation steps. Austerity was harsh and lasted several years. The external stakeholders approved three bailout programs that cost the country 300 billion euros. As a result, a number of times during the journey, Greece appeared halfway out of the union with whom it shares the future. In the last several months, economic conditions are improving slowly. There is a glimpse of hope ahead. However, the lifting of economic clouds offer no cause to celebrate yet. The real optimism lies in the potential of Greek institutions to learn lessons from what happened and to grip the opportunities to transform. My theme today is that genuine transformation is the only safe way ahead. In my remarks, I will discuss transformation as a concept and a process. I will present a model to deliver effective transformation and address the type of leadership that inspires transformation and operationalizes it. Finally, I will discuss the transformation necessary for Greek banks, for Greek institutions, and for key elements of the European Union. The end game of all these players requires a transformation model, a plan, and a vision. I will close with exploring the benefits from connecting these transformations and their interaction. Before I start, I would like to look into the meaning of transformation. Dictionaries define transformation as an apparently miraculous and radical change or alteration, or a fundamental change in an expression or equation resulting from the substitution of one set of variables by another. Given these definitions, if transformation is the result of an equation by substituting one set of variables with another, then we can model it and we can identify those key variables that will lead and create this miraculous and radical change. So looking into the transformation model, in my experience, the strongest factor is the creation of a structure that allows all parts of a whole to dream, to create content, and to execute whatever it takes for the whole to stabilize and to grow. Transformation needs a vision, a strong shared vision. Shared vision is a force in people's heads and in their hearts, a force of impressive power. 
At its simplest level, a shared vision is the answer to the questions, what do we want to create? How do we want to be remembered? A shared vision is a picture that everyone carries with enthusiasm. For a bank, a country, or a union of countries, a shared vision converts the the to the our. It's the road to go from the bank to our bank, from the country to our country, from the European Union to our European Union. It creates the sense of commonality and gives coherence to diverse initiatives. It creates a common identity and enables purpose. It encourages new ways of thinking and acting. It gives courage and fosters risk-taking and experimentation. Basically, a shared vision makes visions not shared pointless and meaningless. Transformation needs rules to be respected. Rules that are legally binding and support mutual trust. There are red lines and design alliances to guide the creation process. The rules define the structure to be lean and competent and not overly complex to support resilience. Transformation also needs shared values, values that create openness, accountability, tolerance, and teamwork. Teamwork means the we is more important than the I. For this, there are edges to overcome. There are silos to be more accessible. There is something almost sacred when transformation holds in its core its commitment to shared values. Transformation means suspending the old way of doing things and discovering new ways that are different. We're guided towards transformation with the goals, purpose, values, lessons learned, and challenges of the day. And also, transformation needs a purpose. Mark Twain said that the two most important days in our lives are the day we were born and the day we find out why. <laughs> it's because the why the purpose springs from our identity, the essence of who we really are. And it is our role as leaders to make the necessary adaptability happen so that transformation can flourish and prosper. There are other factors in transformation too. The other factors as part of the model cover the constituent parts of the system, what is called the institutional machinery necessary for transformation foundations and resources, attributes of efficiency and agility, qualities of what good looks like for clients, citizens, stakeholders, adaptation of the right technologies, operating within the right organizations and governance, gripping the risks to execution with the right control mechanisms. So going back to Greek banks, let's start with applying the transformation model to them. Transformation for Greek banks is needed to shape strategy and to lead to the future. The motivating factors are existential. The banks transform or take risks with their own future. For all banks, there has never been a time of such change in the financial services industry. With such a wave of innovation and renewal, the strength of the drivers for this change is formidable. Some of the challenges are connected to Greek banking, and Greek realities, and some are global, facing all banks. Starting with the global front, customer expectations shift as digital experiences advance month by month. Customers have embraced mobile, and to compete in a world driven by mobile, we have to have a very real, different, and seamless interaction. New technologies are advancing at blistering pace. Data fuels digital technologies and stands at the core of autonomous and personalized solutions. The imperative to maintain and improve returns in a fiercely competitive market drives decisive leadership and long-term investment. Changing regulation and open banking facilitate and accelerate disruption. The new regulatory framework establishing open banking in Europe constitutes one of the most significant changes to banking and payment industry in recent years. New players and new business models new services, products, opportunities for non-traditional non -traditional players. There is a need to transcend from institutional structures to what we call an agile world. In addition, Greek banks face a large share of local challenges. 
Banking, as you know, has its mountain of non-performing loans and limited appetite for new credits. New credits at the household level are scarce because economic conditions are challenged. There is some kind of liquidity trap at work without feasible Keynesian interventions. Given these huge challenges, transformation goes beyond changes to solve problems. It's about something much more fundamental. Transformation for banks means going back to the most basic questions and using them to redefine our identity. These questions include what market are we in? What business are we in? How do we compete? What are the new metrics for success? Focusing more specifically on the National Bank of Greece, NBG faces key challenges to blend a rich tradition with modern realities. Historically, NBG has been the biggest, longest-lived building block of the Greek banking system. It has been the epitome of bank and most influential for the Greek people, a true national bank in, in every sense. NBG itself is a collective accomplishment of defining moments, uh, which we proudly call our legacy. In 1841, we dreamt of creating the first bank in Greece. In 1842, we circulated the first bank note. For almost 180 years, our bank consistently supported Greek governments to deliver key infrastructure projects and morph into the Greek nation's pillar, aiding, supporting, and providing relief and purpose. We had a leading role in helping the Greek economy gain traction and recover during difficult periods, which exactly is what we must do right now. Today, we stand again facing our next defining moment, one that, we will decide, that will decide the future of our organization. NBG must lead the way to an era not only of new banking solutions, but also of new banking ethics, of new social responsibility and a sustainable license to operate. It is our calling to renew our historic, historic role and to fill it with new meaning and future capabilities and hand it over to the next generation in due time. Our future will not unfold without a transformative effort. This is the place we occupy. This is what we're doing now. We have a deep inspiration that this transformation will once again make us the leading bank in Greece. And the model for this transformation, the institutional machinery behind it, it's six pillars, uh, big pillars. They cover the entire bank and in its effort to move forward. Maintain a healthy balance sheet, become agile and efficient, build the best bank for our clients, improve technology and processes, create the optimal organization and governance, establish superior controls and compliance mechanisms. Uh, these pillars have been created and um, they have under them uh, initiatives and under those initiatives, sub-initiatives, and all of the initiatives together are about 80. So what I like to use an example is that it resembles an ancient Greek agora where uh, the leaders of the initiatives and their groups around them uh, are discussing how that particular area can be done better, what we can do more effectively with the help of advisors, uh, what good looks like, and when all of that comes together, then miraculously we see a transformation happen. Um, it's very exciting. Um, we also um, let the people look for the jobs. We didn't um, appoint anyone. We just opened the initiatives to everyone. So it was a particularly democratic way of, uh, of distributing the responsibilities. And um, given that uh, Greek agora and democracy was born a few kilometers away from where we operate now. I thought that was quite poignant, too. Um, talking about the Greek economy and individual economies, as you all know, we have not abolished crises and business cycles. The markets are always eager and ready to test the soundness of economic things. Systemic market meltdowns are unavoidable. We need to be prepared with nimble institutional readiness and agile institutional machinery for the next crisis the next time around. In the Greek economy, there are still problems to overcome. Debt relief was limited because the Eurozone was reluctant to forgive past financial profligacies. Therefore, the debt to GDP ratio stands at a staggering 180%. In addition, Greece is obliged to keep a 3.5% of GDP 
as primary surplus, excluding interest payments. By most accounts, this percentage is a tough task. Tax rates are higher now than in most EU countries. The tax-free threshold is higher than the median private sector wage. Therefore, revenues depend on a small share of taxpayers, and tax collections are improving and need to improve more. So does the judicial system and the public administration system. It's a difficult challenge to do business there. Finally, according to the Bank of Greece, 250,000 of 20 and 30-year-olds left the country in the last 10 years, 450,000 in total. The burden to address all these challenges is now with the Greek people. They need to solve their own problems. They need to invent their own transformation. So the Greek transformation model needs drivers, and the main drivers for that economic transformation are a vision with the characteristics of the future model of economic and social development, shared values to steer the decision-making process, transparency, openness, and accountability, commitment to policy targets, going the extra mile from only doing the nominal conventional adjustments to really and deeply understand and correct existing deficiencies in the economy, alertness and adaptability to a rapidly changing global environment. So the model has a shared vision that is catalytic and needs to be thorough. We have the experience from the successful economic stabilization effort in the 90s, when there was a strong shared vision related to Greece's participation, upcoming participation in the euro. The economy then achieved a balanced macroeconomic position and strong GDP growth for several years. However, it eventually failed to be transformed into a competitive economy. More recently, the latest findings regarding economic competitiveness suggest that despite the substantial progress made in the previous decade, in micro, microeconomic, macroeconomic adjustment, the Greek economy remains broadly stagnant. Big gaps exist to the EU average in crucial areas of the economic and business environment. Economic efficiency, innovation, and competitiveness in general remain underdeveloped. These deficiencies are compounded by the sizable social cost of the crisis and a general sentiment that the burden of the adjustment process has not been distributed evenly. Transforming Greece into a more competitive economy and materially improving social indicators need to be key priorities. So following the same train of thought as we did with the banks, which are these variables necessary for Greece's transformation journey that can maximize the, econ the, the economy's uh, performance in the high priority areas? Uh, these things have been discussed openly with the OECD, the World Bank, the IMF. First is competitiveness. The World Economic Forum defines competitiveness as the set of institutions, policies, and factors that determine the level of productivity of a country and its capacity to promote its citizens' well-being. The competitiveness of an economy is often perceived through its exporting performance, the soundness of its fiscal position, and the properties of its institutional framework. Greece performed poorly in all these areas for several years and now strives to correct these imbalances especially the sizable institutional gap compared to more developed and competitive economies. Efficiency, without which competitiveness cannot exist, in public administration with a view to reducing waste, in entrepreneurship mainly by removing the remaining bureaucratic obstacles to setting up businesses and undertaking investments and incentivizing a genuine market-oriented business activity in public spending and the public investment budget with a view to providing higher quality services, finance investments that boost productivity and maximize synergies. In implementation, as we know, um, a lot of the things that have been agreed and, and put in place need to remain and lagging in their, in their implementation. Transparency, governance, and controls. From a systemic perspective, Greece needs to restore credibility with regards to governance, quality of data, sound institutional discipline, and effective uh, supervision and controls, not only at state level, but also at business level. That needs to happen to boost uh, investors' confidence. Agility, without which we can never be ahead of the curve. The world is moving fast. Concepts of competitiveness and economic transformation are dynamic. We need to become friendlier in welcoming and encouraging foreign investment. 
uh, we need to develop a standardized, compatible way, sort of a one-stop shop like uh, in other countries as Israel, Cyprus, Ireland, and some Eastern European countries where the one-stop shop works well. Reforming education and reversing the brain drain, despite the very high uh, level of uh, tertiary uh, education in the Greek population, 31% as compared to 29% for the EU average, Greece's education system struggles to keep up with standards of developed economies. And this is a critical deficit, and we need to allow more market uh, inputs and operational freedom uh, for things to, to happen. Um, best country for our people is the final variable, and then, uh, according to survey, we lag there too. Uh, I discussed earlier with a small group that, um, as you probably know, Greek words uh, have the uh, agility to put a phobia at the end and a philia at the end, the one or the other. Phobia was the meaning fear, and philia meaning friend uh, or friendship. In Greece, there is uh, the word ephthene means accountability. And we have a wonderful word called ethnophobia, which is the fear of accountability. So as part of this transformation process, we invented a new word called ethnophilia, and we use it uh, all the time to inspire people. So moving on to the third big transformation I want to touch on tonight, it's the European Union. As we all know, the European Union as a whole is also going through its own transformation process and faces significant challenges. Some of these challenges um, uh, bolstered the progress towards further deepening of the Union's transformation. The financial and monetary crisis in the last decade has motivated the European Union to transform and uh, put the transformation process in action. Europe's sovereign debt crisis in 2010 brought, light, brought to light deficiencies and institutional deficits in the design of the Euro and the, and the Union in general. It also set the stage for more significant intensity in efforts for transforming the EU since the inception of the Euro 25 years ago. Additionally, as we all know, the United Kingdom's decision to leave the European Union contributed to a renewed discussion on the future of Europe and appears to have increased Europe's capacity and willingness to act. After years of crisis, political deadlock, Euro pessimism, policymakers are seeming more determined to move the Union forward. Over the last eight years, we witnessed transformation progress. The framework for coordination and supervision of economic policies has been enhanced. European uh, countries implemented structural reforms, consolidated budgets, adjusted wage policies, and repaired banking systems. Surveillance had typically relied on fiscal rules, but now its scope has significantly broadened including structural and social policies. The European Central Bank plays a far more significant role in stabilizing the financial system and economic conditions. Infrastructure has been supplemented with significant entities and supervisory mechanisms which enhance systemic stability. And the euro structures have been supplemented by the banking union, which makes the financial sector more stable and reduces risk of systemic instability. And ESM has been established as a lender of last resort for countries that lose market access or are close to losing market, uh, that lose market access or are close to losing market access. So the transformation model for Europe, in my view, means that we're getting closer to address the bigger themes in Europe. What are the next steps regarding integration? And what is uh, EU positioning? What is the EU positioning in the global arena? These steps um, of EU's transformation are more challenging and require the shared vision and competent leadership. By accelerating the economic transformation, the European Union will attempt to increase its long-term competitiveness in a much more unstable and competitive world. The Union has to combine more efficiently sovereignty and federalism when it addresses its, the increasing global challenges, which include enhancement of competitiveness, innovation, and digital transformation. Monetary Union will remain incomplete without being supplemented by further enhancement of fiscal capacity. The Union will remain incomplete without a common voice to the world regarding economic policy, industrial organization, multilateral economic relations, and foreign affairs. Similarly, the Union needs a streamlining of decision-making processes by European institutions. So, um, I, I, as in closing, 
let's put the transformation uh, together, all three of them that I discussed, and there's something that I can say, transforming together makes us better together. If we take a helicopter view of the three transformations together, we can observe some real positive impacts across the three projects. The three transformations work in parallel, feed each other, and interact with each other in a way that develops the whole, the spirit of the journey, and not, and not just its constituent parts. The transformations create a framework that fosters support, cohesion, and best practices, but most importantly, is agile enough to keep transforming as the pace of change further accelerates. Greece has a unique opportunity to capitalize on the European Union's ongoing transformation process. The EU process bolsters the formation of, Greece, of Greece's national development model in the protected and stable environment provided by the Union. Some refer to the EU protection environment as a greenhouse made available for cooperation with the key players of a transforming EU. Also, it recognizes Greece's geopolitical importance as a key European border country, and both EU and Greece derived soft power from the shared process. Europe's transformation is also inspired by the liberal European order, which is a pillar of Europe's ideology and identity. Europe is increasingly claiming leadership role as chief protector of the liberal order. Despite complaints about Europe fatigue, Europe's transformation into deeper EU integration supports confidence in Europe's common values and share faith. This faith necessary to control populists is necessary to control populists. As Europe's cohesion rises and becomes greater than anticipated, the connected global order looks less threatening and less ungovernable. The outcome can be a lessening of nationalist forces and politics. And some people observed that under these conditions, Greece reached post-populist politics. Nobody wants to leave the Union in Greece, or not that many people want to leave the Union in Greece. They find the advances of the unions quite satisfactory to what they are trying to do. So this is a political spectrum that is, in some respects, some people comment further ahead uh, w uh, from countries that have not quite appreciated that the European transformation is also helping them. I also hope that leveraging these compatible transformations at three levels enhances the recognition of shared values and common purpose. These transformation models can support a more permanent transformation that inspires reinvention and agility to keep up with emerging trends in a continuous and fearless manner, which we all need. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, John, to uh, join me here. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, you are the, the change agents uh, for, uh, for the bank. Transformation. Transformation <laughs> agents, uh, yes. apologies. No problem. Uh, and it also obviously has wider implications for, uh, for Greece uh, itself. I'm fascinated, uh, perhaps more than you could imagine, by this uh, model that you have of engaging staff uh, to become uh, agents of the transformation. You're uh, letting people... Uh, volunteer for the jobs or uh, whatever the, the phrase uh, was. Mm. If we compare that with one of the key priorities of the Troika and the conditionality that Greece had with public administration, then of course it's been one of the most problematic areas of the uh, successive bailouts for, for Greece uh, to have uh, public administration uh, transform itself, to introduce uh, evaluation, to introduce incentive uh, pay. I'm tempted, therefore, to feel that if you can achieve this for the National Bank of uh, Greece, then it would indeed be a major uh, change for the, uh, for the system. I wonder what it is that you feel makes this possible within a bank when it seems to be 
almost impossible to achieve in public administration. Uh, if I think back for elections in Greece since, the, since 1989, we've had different uh, mantras, different narratives, uh, transforming the state, modernizing the state, cleansing the state. Uh, successive election campaigns mm -hmm. have been focused mm -hmm. essentially on producing transformation mm -hmm. within the state institutions. So I wonder what it is uh, that makes you feel that this is possible within a bank. Is there more buy-in to, uh, is there more loyalty to uh, a bank? Certainly, I have friends who, who've worked for uh, the National Bank for many years. Some are now on a pension from the bank and they still feel tremendous loyalty. They identify mm. themselves mm. as being National Bank of Greece. Mm. It's a, a key part of their identity. So, what makes you feel that within a bank it's, it can be different to produce this change? Uh, that, that, that's, that's a very good question. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure I have all the answers, but uh, to start with, um, the, um, the, um, the, I have always held the fundamental belief that um, people are capable for so much more than what they give us today. And um, uh, there is always... Um, uh, just, just to make it a bit iconic, whenever I see a person, I get to know a person, there's always some space around them, which is the growth space that they can get into. And I, I have always watched Greece uh, from a distance, and um, uh, it, 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 was, it, 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 it inspired me to say, somehow we need to transfer more of what good looks like in simple ways, in everyday ways, in, uh, along the side of a bank that needs to understand more of those things. The other thing is that um, um, Greek people are very clever. Um, not that long ago, they invented a lot of things that made the West what it is today. So I was banking on that too, and I think I was right. Uh, there are just so many institutional impediments, um, a little bit of the long Turkish occupation with a peppering of some French administration uh, along the way or at the end of the day. So all that together kept people more constrained. Um, shall I mention the Cappadicia story too? Please. Thank okay. you. Uh, somebody very senior, I was lucky enough the, in my first week on the job, I was sat next to the president of Greece, and I said I was. Um, I asked his advice. I said I was uh, thinking of doing some transformative work at the bank. What's his advice? And he said to me, um, "Don't tell them what to do. Just let them steal it." And he explained the Cappadocia and the potato story. I don't know how many of you here are Greeks who know the story, but basically, Cappadocia was the first leader after the liberation in 1830 and before King Otto of Bavaria came, among other things, to start the National Bank of Greece, uh, some fellow named Cappadocia was elected or agreed that he would lead for a while. And potatoes were coming from America at that point, and it was a good source of protein and food. Uh, the Greek people were starving, so lots of potatoes were introduced into the country, and um, he locked them up in uh, warehouses and said, nobody goes there. Nobody touches them because they're very important. We may need them at some point. And at night, he instructed his guards to leave and open the gates. <laughs> so <laughs> Greeks managed to steal the potatoes and cook them and, and, and feel better. So that, in a very stretched way, uh, that's, uh, that's maybe not a very fair anecdote. But I, we have allowed people to look for the new jobs. Um, first, there had to be a discussion of... Um, uh, it's, it's a little, when I say it's an existential question, I believe it is an existential question in terms of Greece, uh, Greek banks and our banks surviving right. in the long haul. So, so you have to explain that to them yes. and then say the opportunity to join one of the sub-initiatives uh, in the six pillars of transformation is available to you. And then people cut ranks. Um, we explained that they are allowed to do that and come to lead a, a discussion, which eventually becomes a series of steps, which eventually becomes a project that is, um, that is implemented. So if it's um, existential, there's all, the incentive is also a threat? Yes. 
I wasn't expecting such a precise answer, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that would be uh, something of a contrast yeah. with, um, with state institutions, public administration. Correct. Uh, I mean, we... we um, uh, uh, something about the National Bank of Greece that it inspires, something about a lot of Greek things, it inspires an enormous sense of duty when you're there. There is a, there is a duty to do the right thing. Um, I mean, the bank has been around since 1841. It was the first bank in Greece. Uh, and everybody who works there is aware of it. So there is there's raw material in terms of the, the, the sort of the, 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 the more undefined parts of transformation, yes. shared values, shared goals, purpose, yes. which is you can, you can work with people to get that through. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder um, when you think about transforming such a major institution like uh, the National Bank, I wonder what kind of uh, environment you need from uh, a national government within the Eurozone. Uh, what kind of help you would need uh, from governments. Is this something that can be done uh, transforming the bank uh, despite uh, government policy, or is it uh, in some ways dependent on government policy? Um, I, think it's, I think it's all the above. Um, the, um, um, I mean, the, the National Bank of Greece was, in, during many years, an extension of the government, uh, as you know. Yeah. Uh, Otto of Bavaria established that as the principle. And um, um, since the particular issues we had uh, in the last 10 years, the last eight years, that kind of independent governance that we were asked to establish with many non-Greek, uh, non-executives, um, puts an extra strain uh, on the system because that independence is very important. Uh, the direct line with the European Central Bank that we have yes. to hold and, and get things agreed through. So that was that's a positive. Um, uh, the other thing is that um, uh, this is a good and a bad thing. Um, uh, there are lots of good ideas in Greece, as you know. For two and a half thousand years, we've been pumping them out, but. Um, um, you, you, you really need to prove that this idea works, and we're in the process of doing that. And when it does work, I think there will be the receptivity will be a lot stronger. And how long do you think the Odyssey will take? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, um, I convinced a number of key players that we are in a rush. Um, so we are working hard to, to get there. I, I, I imagine, I mean, it's a multi-year work because in order for it to work, and you've heard my comments on the, on the early part, uh, there is an awful lot that needs to be shared, created, agreed, purposeful. So all that cultural stuff needs, needs time to, um, to bed in and, and for us to prove that we're serious. So, I mean, a good cultural transformation takes two years, three years, four years, maybe more. But as long as, um, you know, there's something called the tipping point. Yes. As long as you go past the tipping point, then things become relatively more, more uh, easy. Thank you very much indeed. Let me open it up to questions and comments from the audience. We have uh, colleagues with a microphone. To remind you, it is being uh, videoed and recorded, so we'll have to wait for the microphone to come. Uh, gentleman here, please. If you could just say who you are. Luis Loizu, chairman of the Hellenic Bankers Association in the UK. Uh, Mr. Mihaili, this is a question on uh, how the um, how MBG and uh, the other Greek systemic banks can uh, utilize the transformation pillars you have mentioned to potentially achieve growth in the long run. Uh, having already downsized the sector quite a lot and uh, having already disposed a number of key subsidiaries in the periphery and other neighboring countries. Is the domestic market enough for, for growth, or perhaps will we see a point in time in the future the Greek banks to be more extrovert? Um, I, I would say both. Um, I, I agree with your comment about the domestic market, and we don't know how that plays out. Um, and um, <clears throat> at some point, as you know, because we're under state aid, we had to uh, 
dispose the subsidiaries, the, the, the Balkans and beyond that, that the number of banks had. Um, the, the transformation will prepare us for, um, for all sorts of options and eventualities in the future. I mean, in, in some respects, if, if you remember the, the sort of the, the, the names of the pillars, one of them is being better to our clients. Uh, I mean, Ethniki has traditionally been not particularly respectful to its clients because part of the brand was we were the, the, the ethnic key bank and, and therefore the sort of the accommodation to the client. And we, we, it, we, we kept re living in that tradition. Um, I don't know how much that washes with millennials these days. So we have to somehow um, work to becoming more agile, more, uh, more, um, more transformed. And in general, we need to be leaner which obviously is going to have some social implications. Uh, we need to get more updated control and governance systems across the bank. We need to create uh, a way of identifying talent. Yes. Uh, we need to make ourselves more attractive to younger people to come and work for us and be promoted and be educated by us. I think he has also these other advantages that we have always, um, uh, I mean, we own a, um, a cultural foundation, Miet, in Greece, and we have our archives, and all that is kind of like the, the sort of the, the totemic part of our inheritance that we can use to, if, if correctly addressed, to, to create uh, a, a, a sort of an image and a, and, a, and a reality that's very attractive to people. Now, when, once we get that, then we are, we're, we're available for whatever the future holds. Potentially, I don't know, another extend, expansion in a few years' time. I mean, the same factors that led us before can, uh, can repeat themselves. Um, ask, ask the question, do we need four banks? I don't know the answer to that. Um, and another one that's very important is that can we sustain competitive threats from entrants? It doesn't take a lot to be uh, hitting on an established bank these days uh, as uh, the, open, the open banking environment. It's, uh, it's quite available <clears throat> for people to disrupt. So we, you know, we're, we're, I, I sound like a, a general now when I say that, but in, in the military terms, if you don't know the outcome, you prepare yourself for whatever option is going to happen and, and then you're readier. Thank you. Other comments, uh, questions, please. Can we take the gentleman here, please? Thank you very much, uh, Michael Papadakis, I'm a solicitor. Thank you for a very elucidating uh, address. I have two questions, if I may. The first one, there are stakeholders in the transformation project. For me, the challenge is to take the people and inspire them to transform the way they act, they do business, they view the state in particular, the tax office, etc. How are you going to inspire, and you are one of the main stakeholders uh, as one of the leading banks in the country? That's my first question. The second question is, are you concerned by the hammering of the banking stocks in the last few weeks, you are taking also the entire Athens stock market down. Is this a good indication of the success of any transformation that Greece needs desperately right now? Thank you. <clears throat> Shall I start with the second question? Yes, um, the easy one. The easy one. <laughs> um, it's, it's a very thin market. And um, um, it's, it's a half full versus half empty situation. Um, the, the path for banks going forward is not an easy one. Uh, we, we have to make some money every year in a difficult economic environment. We put it together with the reserves we have for the non-performing loans and we basically um, provide heat to the iceberg to melt slowly. On, on an annual basis. So that process can be seen with optimism or it can be seen as a longer and more difficult process than it actually is. I mean, again, this is not a 
it is a public forum, but it's only a public forum. I think I think it's been I think it's been overdone. I can say that loudly. I think it's been overdone. I think uh, the the journey is um, is difficult, but the journey has solutions. So um, I'm not advertising buying uh, banking stocks right now, but I think the 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 process has been overdone. And, uh, and, and the journey does have uh, solutions, which are embedded in the transformation discussion, which leads me to your first question. Um, Could I just yeah. pause on the, that, <clears throat> excuse me, the second uh, question, because it paralleled the idea of, excuse me, <clears throat> what would be the criteria of your, uh, of your progress? So if we were talking in two years' time, four years' yeah. time, et cetera, if it's not the values on the stock market, what would be the sign of the criteria for the success of your transformation? Yeah, um, the, obviously the reversal of the stock situation, that would be the, the most obvious one. We have been reluctant to go through the details of the transformation because we're still in the process of engineering it and putting the right people in place and getting the right programs. We, we are hoping to get an investor day that would go into a deeper uh, detail than what I've just uh, done way deeper and explain what we're planning to do um, to enhance the credibility. Uh, Greece is also a country of, of big plans. Uh, this plan alone will not shift the, the stock market. They want to see what are you going to do, by when, what's your return on equity going to be, how are you increasing your revenues, what, how are you reducing your expenses, what other things you're doing to enhance your position. We have answers to all that, or we, I should say, we're developing, we're designing answers to all that, that eventually will, uh, will be more public and, and hopefully will have an impact. On your first question, um, we, um, um, how do we inspire people? Uh, you cannot do the things we do without a parallel on culture transformation uh, and uh, how um, how you can get people across silos in any organization to talk to each other, to collaborate with each other, to trust each other. Uh, there are strong personal relations, but uh, we have all seen silos. I can admit that the silos I met in Greece are thicker than some of the silos I worked in other places in my life, and I've known lots of silos. So You've never worked at the LSE, have you? <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I imagine, uh, I imagine that uh, academia is not spared. Uh, so uh, there is a very strong uh, coaching and cultural and uh, support of um, how we develop, how you change, how you transform the people who are going to transform the bank. So that effort hopefully would, would uh, serve the first question. Um, Thank you very much indeed. Please. Hello, that's Stratos Hatsigiannis, um, ex-NBG, ex-chairman of Hellenic Bank Associations, an entrepreneur. I think what I want to ask you is having regard to the NBG culture, uh, would you put your weight behind the efforts of flattening the uh, hierarchy of the National Bank of Greece, which is long-standing, and at the same time consider how young people can find avenues to, to strive and perform in a situation where they can easily do in other European countries or even in the US? The, 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 give me again the second half of the question. Would I put my effort? Opportunities. Opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yes. The answer is yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes and yes. It, it's a very important, uh, I mean, as you know, the, the, the hierarchy uh, it basically wins any other consideration. I mean, if your boss tells you to do something, you do it. And um, uh, while it's, um, in some respects, it's admirable and it shows respect and all that, we, we need to, to make sure that those, uh, that other considerations are, are, are more important. We also need to, um, and this is where sort of the labor arrangements we have need to be uh, brought to bear, we need to, ensure that somehow the survival of the institution and therefore the survival or ability to, to be a player uh, rely on getting the best people to do the best, to do the jobs. 
and that means younger people. What's interesting, uh, the significance of what I was saying before, the fact that the, this particular transformation roles opened up in AD initiatives and people were allowed to take them regardless of seniority. And um, um, the only thing they had to prove is a, a specialized knowledge in the subject uh, and a specialized passion to make that knowledge come to life in terms of transformation. So we're working our way. Um, I'm, I'm very, very deeply aware that you cannot rush this process. You don't want to people to run away from you because you have a technical flaw in what you're saying. So it needs to be done correctly and, and, um, and we're working on that. But at the end of the day, that's exactly the dream. A management development system that works, a performance system that works. Uh, I mean, for a while, everybody, as you probably know, was a seven, which is the top end. Uh, they were all flawless. So how do we create uh, performance curves and you support people to grow and be better and all that? It's all, it's all, connected, to, it's all connected to the amount of work we have to do. Uh, because we're adding the transformation burden is on top of everything else they were doing. So if everybody's a seven, they cannot do both jobs, there's something wrong. So we're putting a lot of pressure on the organization to respond correctly by assessing people correctly and then eventually the right rewards will come. And we cannot pay bonuses yet. So when, once that happens, there will be an additional incentive that um, we know where bonuses can go wrong so we can try and avoid those pitfalls. Think of me as uh, vulgar, if you wish. Mm. Uh, but That's difficult, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if bonuses can't be paid, but there are um, people volunteering to take uh, new tasks, what's the incentive to the individual to, to volunteer if um, the chairman isn't actually offering is it the, the time? Bonus? Is it the time to introduce Philotimo to this conversation? Philotimophilia. Philotimo, for the non-Greeks, is, as you know, the love of honor. Uh, and um, um, I think I, uh, this is this is again one of the pleasant surprises. I think people respond to a call. Uh, I, 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 I mean, this may. Uh, the, the concept of duty in the country is very deep. Um, you know, when it uh, when it comes to the crunch of things, I remind them, the skin on Rima uh what happened in Thermopylae, and uh, a, a, and therefore you 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 press on that and, and you get the response. They also know that at some point, and I'm very vocal about that. We are all very vocal that at some point we will become a, merit, a bigger meritocracy and the appropriate financial rewards will be there. Mm. So uh, we will. Okay. So that, 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 um, that plays, that plays, a, plays a, has a role. Thank you. As well. uh, other question, gentlemen, right in the middle. Thank you. Giorgio Rapetritis, Professor of Law, University of Athens, and visiting here. I have two tiny questions. Actually, one question, one um, slight comment. The question is this. Is there a budget for the transformation of the bank? And the comment is, don't you think that there is a bit of over-reliance on the actual participation of, of the staff in the whole transformation project? and and and, a, and an underestimation of the actual economic conditions in Greece, in the sense that since uh, we all know how volatile the banking sector is in Greece and the shareholder status at NBG, do you think that you could proceed with transformation even if the general economy is not progressing well? Yeah, the short answer is yes. Um, uh, because, uh, to, to refer to the earlier comment, we are preparing the bank for um, survival and for uh, prospering in the world no matter what. I mean, a, 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 well, a, a better bank with all the right systems in place, with the right digital um, 
uh, orientation to it uh, will will be a better bank than the one we have today. So um, uh, also, um, and again, this is a factor that, that we, we need to bring up, the economy will somehow sort of develop further. I mean, the, the, the faster the economy uh, grows and the sooner and the wider that growth is, the the more appropriate it would be for the bank to be transformed. But even in lean times, the bank um, the bank needs that transformation and it would be better for it. Um, in terms of shareholders, we are taking everybody with us. I um, mean, the fund, as you know, the stability fund is uh, a 41% owner. They keep reminding me of that. They are on board with what we're trying to do. Uh, the regulators are on board. Uh, government is on board in terms of what we're trying to do. And um, um, it, it appears to be a, a sort of like a, a, a healthy step in the right directions, no matter what the economic environment is. If it's very successful and it's better, then we're better off. Um, in terms of expenses, we, uh, we have some experts to, to enhance the knowledge in the various initiatives that come in and tell us what it looks like. Uh, we, um, we also uh, have, we are not replacing the people that are involved in transformation. Uh, we don't go out and hire new people to do the jobs they left behind. We just let the management sort that one out. And um, so far it works. Thank you. Other questions? Please, so, Ambassador. Uh, There's a, a microphone. Th thank you very much. Um, thank you. Uh, before you embark to the, in the transformation of the bank, I think everybody has realized that uh, there has been a transformation of the bank itself through the crisis. I, I mean that the, the, the shareholders' composition is not probably to the eyes of many people the National Bank of Greece that it was. And this is actually my question because for those who are not familiar with the role of the bank in Greece, um, it was not only its banking activities, uh, it was also its its social, if you want, aspect of its activities, its patronage of the arts, its support of education. And I wonder now in these um, six pillars of transformation, which sound to me as uh, pillars of wisdom, but still, where and if this, the continuation of the support of, of arts, education, culture, and the social activity of the bank will still be there. And, um, I hope that you don't think that this is a conflict of interest because the bank is not publicly owned anymore. The majority, of course, is not so. An ambassador can ask this question as, as, a, yeah. as a, a client of the bank. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Uh, it, it's a very good question. Um, uh, we will, we will we, th this is part of our inheritance. This is part of who we are. And uh, the, 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 the transformation has in one of its pillars exactly that. How do we maintain our role? Because our role has been always um, a, a participant in, in during uh, difficult times and during infrastructure work. So we, um, as you probably know, um, we exited the emergency liquidity assistance first. Uh, we're able to make loans. We are supporting a number of um, a number of in a number of areas. Uh, we are in energy and food and all that, where the government would be very, uh, very uh, supportive in terms of where we're going. And in terms of the arts and uh, the, the MIAT Institute and, and, and other things we do, um, we, we, what we want to do is we want to somehow blend the traditional role, preserve it as much as possible with becoming a more modern institution. So it's actually very exciting because it, it, it mixes the two. And, and uh, we have a, one, one of the initiatives is called The Brand, NBG, The Brand. And in that, uh, along with strategy, those two uh, initiatives uh, would respond well to everything we do and, um, and, and, and gather uh, who we are in terms of our, um, our identity, our purpose, who we have been. And, and modernize without disturbing uh, too much. The, uh, Mr. Manos here is leading our 2021 uh, celebrations and how we want to be a key player in that. 200 years 
after the after the start of the revolution and 180 years after the foundation of the bank. So we've got um, we don't want to we consider it and I personally from what I have been what I have seen and what I have been instructed is that it's an incredibly important role to play and that sense of duty to preserve that is very very important to to management and and to the board uh, which the board has uh, as you know a number of non greeks uh, in it and um, that can be a bit of a challenge sometimes but we we bring them along as much as we can to make sure that exactly what you're saying ambassador stays stays uh, as uh, stays in, in in place we're coming to the end of our allotted time but i wonder if uh, we could uh, ask a, a london uh, question um, in two parts, perhaps. Um, if I was a, a Financial Times journalist, I uh, imagine I would be asking you about the significance of uh, the MPLs for, for the bank, uh, trying to be topical and um, native to London. I'd also link this perhaps to Brexit. Uh, so much of the activity, as I understand it, takes place in the city of London. Mm. Uh, are you factoring in in your plans uh, different scenarios for uh, for Brexit, and do they have any significance for a major financial institution in Greece? Um, it, it, it's a very good question. Um, uh, by transforming ourselves, we will remain attractive. Mm. As a, I mean, this is actually the intention. Um, the, 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 I, I've been trying to find the word investable in Greek, but we want to become the most yes. investable bank in, in Greece. And uh, at some point, um, uh, we, we, the, the, at some point, the banking sector will become an attractive sector to invest in. Uh, people need banks to grow and all that. So we, we, we factor that by becoming more attractive, we will be a, a a better, a better, um, a better investable opportunity, investing, investing opportunity for, for the city of London. Um, and are you concerned about the access to the city of London in the future? Um, not really. Uh, I imagine, I imagine the city will manage to. It's a very good question. I, I imagine the city will manage to preserve its ability to. To, to tap uh, correct investment opportunities. And, and we genuinely, I don't want to be humble about that, but we genuinely uh, want to become an attractive investment opportunity. Um, we're sad about, I mean, I'm personally sad about Brexit, but that's uh, either here or there. <laughs> yes. it's, uh, it's a difficult one, uh, especially as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this convergence of, uh, of transformations that uh, reinforce each other. It, it, it's a very powerful, powerful uh, time we live in, and uh, sometimes we focus on, on the negatives, but there's an awful lot of positives for banking sectors, country transformations, where EU is headed, and how EU responds mm. uh, to this crisis, which is uh, very, very positive. Well, out of time, but uh, can I give you uh, genuine thanks uh, for uh, this presentation? Can you please join me in thanking Costas <laughs> Mutalini?